brothers and sisters. Um, today is the birthday of Saint Charbel, and many of you would know that I have great devotion to Saint Charbel. What a powerful saint! You know the countless miracles and proofs of his active intercession in heaven is incredible. Um, and so I've given out many medals of him. Of um, when I had the opportunity of of going to pilgrimage to Lebanon last year, um, I was able to get some of the oil from his monastery, and um, he just turns up. And I wanted to reflect a little bit today about a great mystery in the middle of his life. And this is linked to a conversation I was having with a friend today as we were praying. And and I want to just say, St. Shabbat is a great guardian of the mystery. And, you know, the presence of God is so precious. It's a grace um, to be able to to contemplate God. And... This is such a precious, precious gift. Um, if we would really understand this, you know, and even myself to really grow in this, how precious it is, precious it is to, to really be aware of God as much as we can and to live and adore Him and love Him, to serve Him, um, and to find that, that mystery um, in others and in life and, and to be with the Lord and to have reverence. So St. Shabbat strikes me as someone who really was a guardian of God's mystery and how that mystery of God, when I say the mystery of God as in himself, God's, God's very revelation, God's very self and his presence. And the way that that presence of God, the way that God communicated himself to St. Shabal in so many ways and, and to us, St. Shabal was so attentive. Now he had a unique vocation where he was in a monastery with monks and praying, living a life of poverty and um, prayer and obedience and you know just praying for the world and then he felt called into deeper solitude and he left the monastery of his brothers and he went and became a monk I mean a hermit and there again it was almost like a going deep into guarding this mystery of God but because from our from the scriptures from our Catholic tradition we understand that even for someone like him that becomes a hermit um, they're not leaving their brothers and sisters in the world, quite the opposite. They, they, they're going into deeper solitude so that they could be concentrated on prayer to be connected to the world, connected to people in such a profound way. Now, of course, this takes supernatural eyes and this is faith. You know, the church teaches in her, in her tradition and in her magisterium that this way of life of prayer um, imitates Christ in the desert or those alone moments of Christ um, where he's alone praying with the Father. And you could have a whole vocation just to living that one mystery out of Jesus is to perpetuate it in the life of the church. You know, that it's a sign of that, that mystery of Jesus in the life of the church. And the church teaches that that vocation gives life to the whole church. Like St. Therese of Lisieux, she was in a Carmelite monastery, but her vocation there was, was filling the church with light at, at the supernatural level. And, you know, Pope Francis recently in a, in a homily um, and a general audience spoke about the importance of these contemplatives given over completely to contemplation and prayer. They're not withdrawn from, from our contemporary needs, quite the opposite, they're sacrificed to pray to, so that, as St. Therese says, so she prays so that the preacher can, can speak words of grace and touch hearts, but it's linked, we're all one body, so we're not, we're not separate, we're linked together. Anyway, so, so St. Shabal chose this life of guarding the mystery of God in a more attentive, incredible way in solitude and what i was speaking about with my friend early on was a quote from from pope benedict's verbum domini um and a great one of the great documents an exhortation by him on the word of god and and he quotes in this document a scripture uh, a commentary by saint jerome on the word of god and in a sort of an analogy a comparison to the eucharist and St. Jerome says that, you know, we are so careful to, to guard every fragment of the Eucharist because it's precious, every fragment of the Eucharist, as long as we could see it and know whether it's from the Eucharist. We, it, you know, it's bread, it's, it, it's God, it's, it has become God on the altar. It has become the living body of Jesus Christ. Come, not just his body, but him. He it's the person present, not just his body, but it's a living body, it's a person. And so we guard every fragment of the Eucharist. Like when we go up to Holy Communion, that's why, you know, for many generations, communion received only tongues so that 
the fragments won't be easily lost. So when people receive on their hands, it's not that they don't leave the fragments on their hand, etc. But St. Jerome says, just as much reverence we give to God, that mystery of Jesus in the Eucharist. He said we should have that same God for when the word of God is, when he, when he says the body and blood of Jesus is poured into our ears. In other words, when the word of God is proclaimed. And we, we have to have reverence to God every mystery, not to be just there sitting absent-mindedly. But if we get distracted, we get distracted. But we call our mind back to reverence, to listen to God's word, to, to God each word being announced in the Mass, in the liturgy, as a fragment, as a, as a, as a crumb of the Eucharist. So he says to God the crumb of the word, to, to be attentive to that. And it's the same thing in our life. We have to, to, to try and guard that mystery of God coming to us in so many ways. You know, and in, in when we read God's word, to keep his words like now, to keep his words. And so St. Shabal, I think, could teach us how to be a guardian of the mystery.